it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. Recently, shit has been popping off in South Africa, with students across the country taking to the streets to demand free education. To learn more about this situation, I recently caught up with Alex Hutz, a member of Roads Must Fall, a grassroots student group that came together in March of 2015 and which has been a major force in the student movement ever since. Hey Alex, how the fuck are you? Um, it's a very loaded question, I'm surviving. For viewers who might not know, who was Cecil Rhodes and why do people want his statue removed from the University of Cape Town campus? Cecil John Rhodes is a symbol of white supremacy. He was a colonizer. He um, was one of the first British governors in colonized South Africa. And he plundered the resources of this country, genocided millions of black people and enslaved them, if not killed them. But also, was the founder of racialized capitalism um, in this country because he started the first huge mining companies which used and exploited um, the cheap labor of black people. In recent years, university and high school students from so-called Quebec to Chile have shown that when students get organized, they can be a serious fucking force to be reckoned with. Can you tell us a bit about how the current student movement has spread throughout South Africa and how it is organized? We've seen the South African government become a very repressive um, government that almost kind of mimics the apartheid state. So there's a lot of repression, police brutality, a clampdown on activities. So it's been a bit difficult to be coordinated in the same way in which it seems the Chilean students, students of India, uh, Montreal, etc. So what you find now is a country that is deeply polarized and students who are entering institutions that have had no change. They're almost the exact same institutions. They exist in the same way as they did under apartheid. And now black students having to go into these institutions and experience incredible psychological and epistemic violence but also physical violence, as you've seen recently from white students, but uh, management of the university and police. So it's been amazing to see how these protests have spread. So it started at this, it moved to us, and we had a national shutdown, which we coordinated through WhatsApp and, um, you know, like Facebook, etc., etc. And obviously that's getting a little bit more difficult to do because we know that the state um, through the National Intelligence Agency is trying to infiltrate our movements and to spy on, on many of us. Last year saw an incredible level of student mobilization for the Fees Must Fall movement, which ultimately succeeded in rolling back planned tuition increases. How were peeps involved in this movement able to keep momentum going after achieving its initial aims? So I think for us, and for many of us, it was never just about the 0% increase. We were calling for free education and still call for free education and the ending of outsourcing at all of these institutions. And so while um, that has been a victory and it's been used to demobilize, you know, masses of students who supported and were active in these mass fall, it was also um, interest, interesting to see the masses of of students to join Fuse Must Fall and I think it's also because it never necessarily articulated a radical politic in the way in which we do in Rose Must Fall, the way we where we have ideological pillars like black consciousness, pan Africanism, black radical feminism. So it was able to galvanize masses of students who not necessarily were who had never been politicized before. Um, and where this is like their first kind of entering of marches or protest action, etc. Um, and I think it is useful to start in that, in that kind of mobilization for, for the world and for South Africans to see the police brutality and management brutality that students face for, for such simple um, non-violent demands and how that was met with the violence of the state and the violence of the institution. So it's been very difficult, but I think it is clear in a country with such high inequality and poverty 
and racism where black students are completely alienated and marginalized from the institution. That free education must happen in 2016 in order for the black majority in this country to be able to enter these institutions and not be excluded. Because of its historic role in the struggle against apartheid, the African National Congress, or ANC, is seen by many people around the world as a torchbearer for anti-colonial struggles more broadly. Yet many people, including members of the Rose Must Fall movement, feel that the ANC has betrayed their original mission. Why is that? We went through a negotiated settlement with the apartheid regime, which meant that many of the oppressive instruments that existed in this country to replace, alienate, exploit and marginalize black people and oppress black people were left intact, especially the economy of the country, right? So mining stayed intact, agriculture, etc. People retained the wealth, people, white people retained the wealth, white people retained the land. And you never saw, black people to this day have not seen any kind of redistribution or, or even compensation or, or reparations for what has happened to us in this country. So I think for me, the ANC continues and has always been like a buffer and a gatekeeper for white supremacy, um, white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. And um, their position now, as Fernand would speak of, is they are the, the comprador class, the middleman between those who still retain power and the, and the black majority. The ANC is currently facing a challenge from the left, coming from a new party called the Economic Freedom Fighters, or EFF. What is the relationship between the student movement and the EFF? And do you feel that the betrayal of the ANC has soured many South Africans' opinion on traditional electoral politics? So the EFF, the rise of the EFF, I think is incredibly important in this country to challenge this notion that this generation is apathetic or apolitical. And you, you can see the, the EFF over a very short period of time gained huge support. And I suppose the EFF, just like the ANC, has an incredible amount of contradictions. So many of them come from the ANC and have grown up in the ANC and, and in other movements that are very close to the ANC, like the South Africa, SASCO and Young Communist League and the ANC League, which are all kind of linked to the ANC. And, you know, they talk about economic freedom, etc., and nationalizing of the economy, but there's also a challenge about how within that organization materialism through its leadership is, is, is kind of accepted and it goes unchallenged. South Africa has a variety of other powerful social movements, such as the country's trade unions and the Shack Dwellers movement, Abashali Besem Jomdolo, or ABM, which I understand has a large section in Cape Town. Has there been much overlap and solidarity between students and some of these other social movements? I think for us to see the rise in social movements like Abu Shalib and Dondolo and the way in which they raised and put the issue of housing and land to the fore um, of political discussion and debate has been incredibly important. But I think what's also been really interesting in our engagement as young people with these political organizations and social movements is to say that as young people from one generation to another, you know, we, we are forging our own struggle and we are fighting our own battles and we would like your support. But in a way that is not patronizing, that is not telling us what to do, but really being able to learn together and unlearn together and build a bigger, broader movement because we know that we cannot do this by ourselves. Anything else you'd like to add? Maybe it's just to say that I think it's critical that we, we build genuine um, transnational solidarity as young people and as students across the world. So to support the students of, of India, to support the students of Chile, Brazil, South Africa, Canada, Kenya, who are struggling for the, for the same things we are in, a, in countries where we are repressed, brutalized, etc. I think we can learn a lot from each other and support each other.